All right, praise God. Jesus bless this message in Jesus' mighty name. I pray. Amen. Um, thank those of you who's already starting to send in your uh, your um, testimonies for Jesus and how He's helped you since you've been coming here since He led you here. Thank you for sending them in on His three of y'all. Um, and Jeffrey Werner, I don't know where yours went to. I didn't delete it. Somebody deleted it. YouTube, I guess. If you didn't do it, somebody did. But I found it in my YouTube studio because when y'all delete stuff or if YouTube deletes stuff, it'll still be in my YouTube studio. It never gets deleted from here. So I found it and Shanoa's putting it up. Thank you so much. I couldn't find it. Um, but I did ask for y'all to email it to me, though, so there's no confusion like that. So I appreciate it. All right. So one of you had a question about the two atoms. OK, let's go ahead and talk about that. I'm going to go ahead and answer this today. Because I'm sure a lot of other people, it seemed to be quite a few people that had a question about it. Um, but let's go ahead and talk about it. Okay, and these are foreshadows of Jesus Christ. We've been over this before, different foreshadows in the Bible. There's different ways to study how Old Testament anticipates, reveals, promises, or foreshadows Jesus Christ. Okay, Um Jesus' presence, y'all, is throughout the Old Testament, okay? So, we've looked at parallels and similarities between biblical people. You can look at it that way. Um, by looking at events, you know, like, for example, the Exodus anticipates how Jesus frees us from slavery of sin, right? And uh, you look at things. You know what I mean? For example, the tabernacle that we just went over month ago, which John 1 14 connects with Jesus, right? They're all foreshadows of Jesus. Okay. We can see God setting up history for the coming of Christ and doing it, not simply by speaking a prophetic word, but by arranging the affairs of human beings. Because remember, God works through people. Okay. So when we understand this truth, man, it's a great truth then we can hope to believe our own lives, your life. It's going to point to Jesus Christ and rejoice in the Lord of history who makes such wonderful stories out of us. Amen? Because God, the Lord God don't change. You're part of that story. That's why God is trying to get you guys right now to become the body. Not just sit and listen to a video or sit and show up in a group, but become the body. Participate. Reach out. Give email. And I gave you on my community page a chance to put your email and your name in there. Okay, so some people can start emailing each other here. And that goes to this ministry right here. And you all can become the body we're supposed to be. But you guys, you go look at that video. It ain't a comment on there. 50 some views, been in about an hour. Ain't a comment one on there. Shame on the church in Jesus' name. Jesus wants you to be a doer and not be ashamed of him. And being a doer is part of helping other people in prayers and just having someone to talk to. That's your job, okay? But you get to decide, okay? Obviously, I can tell. There are many people just ain't into it, ain't into Jesus like that. So let me go for the ones that really want to know God. You asked about the two atoms. Let's talk about it. That's a question right there. You can answer in the comments section. And I said, because of Adam's sin, the good world that God made became corrupt. How does Jesus Christ fix what Adam broke? How does Jesus, the second Adam, fix what Adam broke? Put that in the comments section. Let's go over... Adam being a foreshadow of Jesus Christ. Let's put it right here. Adam being a foreshadow of Yeshua HaMashiach. You got Adam over here foreshadowing Christ straight across the board. Left, right, left, right, left, right. Okay. Adam here, Jesus there. Um, I did write the, uh, I'm going to take the scriptures. And put them in parentheses in red. So you'll know where the scriptures are. You can help find them uh, better, easier with the dog. It's all black. So let me put the red around the scriptures here. Okay, give me a second. There 
There you go. I think I got them all. Yes, I did. Okay, let's go back and forth. Okay, Jesus Christ, right? He is the key to what God had been pointing to in all the history of God's people. All the way back from Genesis. He's the key. Okay? And one way to see this is to examine parallels like we've done before. And we're going to do it again soon. Between uh, Old Testament people, events and things, the life of Jesus Christ and the New Testament. Compare. Okay? And you're going to find some of these parallels in Romans chapter 5. Okay? Paul writes that sin entered into the world through one man. That one man is Adam. Sin entered into the world through Adam. And sin led to death of all people. The Bible says, for all have sinned because of Adam. He also writes that Adam was a figure of someone uh, who was to come. In Romans 5.12, go ahead and pause your video and look at Romans 5.12. Romans 5.12. You're going to see right here. Second here. Therefore, just as through one man. Where's my pointer, y'all? Just as through one man. Who? Adam, sin entered the world and death through sin and this death spread to all men because all have sinned since Adam, the first man sinned, right? Okay. Paul said that if the sin of one person, Adam, would cause many people to die, how much more, y'all, could the gift of God's grace by one person, who is Jesus Christ, cause many to be righteous and have eternal life? That's that. Let me put it at the top here. Jesus Christ. Okay. The Bible, y'all, as you study it, and we will be doing more of it, maybe do one a week. Uh, in the barn, we're getting ready to soon to pass out Bible characters, and you guys are going to give us give me an essay on them. Teach us about these people in the Bible. Why do you see God working through the people? How's he working? how they know it was him? What do you want him to do? You're going to use your realities to understand that. So the Bible is full of these parallels or types, you can call them. The study of types is called typology, if you don't know. And the example that I'm giving you here, you'll see typologies. Adam is the, uh, Adam, cause the type is Adam, and Christ is the opposite, okay? And I'm going to show you here. So we're opposite right here. There's a line that divides these two. But yes, yeah, so Jesus is a foreshadow. What he destroyed over here, he came and fixed it. He did what Adam was supposed to do, but couldn't do. Okay? What I mean by that is, you'll see right here, Adam was the first person in this creation. You want to write this down, because obviously a lot of people have questions on this. You need to be able to answer it for somebody else, because you're supposed to be a servant, right? Help other people. Adam is the first, was the first person in this creation. 1 Corinthians 15, 23 over here. Jesus Christ is the first person in the new creation. 1 Corinthians 15, 23. Can you see that? No, a little bit. Okay. Going back over here. Adam is called the son of God in Luke 3, 38. But Jesus Christ is the Son of God in John 1.14. Write that down. Adam is called the Son of God in Luke 3.38. But Jesus is the Son of God, John 1.14. Praise you, Jesus. We'll give you all a chance to write that down. Right here. Adam is God's administrator or ruler. 
That's what he made him to be. Genesis 1, 28. But Jesus Christ is God's anointed to be king. Matthew 1, 16. Adam was the head was to be the head of the race. He, he is the head of the race. Genesis 3 20. Jesus is head of the new creation. Romans 5 12 through 24. He's a type of Adam. Just did what Adam couldn't do. Right here, Adam's his actions brought consequences to his children causing us to inherit sin and death. That's Genesis 3, 16 through 19. Jesus, his actions brought consequences to God's children, causing us to inherit righteousness and life. That's Romans 5, 12 through 19. 1 Corinthians 15, 20 through 22, and verses 45 through 49. Let me back this up. Okay, right here. Adam joined Eve and rebelled against God. Genesis 3, 6. Adam joined Eve and rebelled against God. Genesis 3, 6. But Jesus Christ redeemed his bride, that's the church, by obeying God. Revelation 19, 7 through 9. Let me see if you can see that. Yes, you can. Okay. At the bottom, Adam's shame required death of an animal to cover it. Genesis 3.21. But Jesus was shamed, stripped, and slain to cover our shame. Matthew 27, 27 through 35. Okay, so Adam, he's a good uh, first example of a type, a type, a type of an Adam. It shows very clearly, right, that typology focuses on specific events or character traits rather than on the person as a whole. Okay, so there's some big differences, y'all, between Adam and Jesus Christ. In fact, they are complete opposites of one another. You see that? So, it's not that Adam was like Christ, no. Rather, some features of his story parallel the life of Jesus Christ and his ministry, okay? Some are positive and others are negative, okay? So, he is like, it's like. He's a type. Jesus is a type of Adam. A type meaning he's first in everything that Adam didn't do. Adam is a type of Christ in that he's the first of anything where Jesus is the first to bring us to eternal life. You know, Jesus did what Adam couldn't do, even though Adam was the first one in this creation right here. Jesus fulfilled everything any nobody can do, okay? And there's more foreshadows of Jesus throughout the Bible, y'all. Tomorrow... I'll come on here because we're not going to add any more studies for the barn this week. I pretty much got y'all filled up. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. But tomorrow we're going to pay attention because we got to get it. We got a lot of ground to cover in these last days that we're in. We're going to talk about Noah tomorrow being a foreshadow of Jesus Christ. We're going to talk about Abraham being a foreshadow of Jesus Christ. Okay, you're going to keep all these foreshadows. Put this in your foreshadow a section of your notebook, your study notebook, put foreshadow at the top and highlight it or something. Because these are foreshadows. Everything in the Old Testament is a foreshadow of Yeshua HaMashiach. And he's the one that fixes it all, man. Restoration over here. Death over here. Restoration and life over here. Death and separation over here. Restoration. Jesus Christ. Now, how many of you can't give Jesus Christ the honor that he's due? In every single way. Don't you think he's worth it, y'all? So here's your question. Put in the comments section right here. 
because of Adam's sin, the good world that God made became corrupt. How does Jesus Christ fix what Adam broke? Now that I caught, you know, spit it out to y'all, how does Jesus fix what Adam couldn't, what he broke? Put that in the comment section, y'all. All right, I'm done with these for the day, y'all. I'm still trying to hit all y'all's emails, y'all. I'm getting plenty of them with, with everybody's wanting prayers and stuff. But I'm telling you, y'all need to go to my community page and put your email in that in that video right there. You'll see it. Because you need the church needs to be helping with these emails, y'all. You need to be helping each other. Whether you know each other or not, that's how you meet. You know why God put us here, y'all? To give him glory. Love him first, right? And then other people. If you serve, you think you're serving God, but you're sitting there behind your camera saying, I'm not going to do it. Well, you ain't you. That's not love. That's not love. So you need to recheck your uh, relationship with Jesus Christ because where Jesus is, there's love. And you know why he gave you friends and family and other people around you in the world? To show these people his love. That's why. Okay. So I do expect to see some of my barners anyway. I don't know what you YouTubers are doing, but some of my barnyarders, man, to actually get, get in there and get involved. Get involved. That's what he got you on this earth for, to be involved. Okay? That's for your better good, and it's to be an actual servant of Jesus Christ. Just like he came to serve for you. He did serve you. He died for you. You understand? Now, Jesus ain't liking this people pushing him to the side like he don't exist. He exists, y'all. And now you do your part. You know, say, what did you do with the life my father gave you? What are you doing with it, y'all? Come on now. Participate. Come on, church. Rise up. In Jesus' name, Satan, I come against you. Every single person that clicks off this video and has like got a sarcastic comment or something that goes against God and his work and his people, I come against you, Satan, in the name of Jesus. And I cast you away from every one of these children that God brought here to work in his ministry, to study in his ministry, to learn in his ministry, to fellowship in his church. I cast you to the throne of God for judgment and I bind you there in the name of Jesus Christ. Now, church, you got to step out and do. What you do is you go on my community page, you put your name and your email and I'll set a couple of y'all up. Or you can go through there. Matter of fact, I don't have time to do that. You can pick a couple emails out, man, and, and start emailing. Hey, I'm so-and-so. I'm on We Are Jesus Stewards too. How are you doing, you know? Uh, uh, is there anything I can pray for you about? What can I do for you? Don't worry about people asking you for money. Ain't nobody going to ask nobody for money, okay? We need prayers. We need prayer warriors. You are supposed to be an intercessor prayer warrior for your church. So you need to do. God is telling you, everybody listening to me, we're going to thumb it up, do. Be a doer, not just a thumber, a doer in Jesus name, y'all. Do you realize tick tock, tick tock, tick tock, we in the last minutes? Do you realize what it's going to be like when you stand in front of God and you're going to say, why didn't you do anything? Come on, church, rise up. He's trying to move you. Okay. Everybody wants to do something for God. Well, here's your chance. Get him to do. All right. God bless you all. I thank some of you for what you are doing. Anything the rest of you needs in the description on the videos or jesusdoers.com because right here me igor and shanoa we doers we doers and ain't nobody gonna stop us and nothing gonna slow us down we doers until god takes us home that's what you need to be a doer all right god bless you all we're here to help you encourage you motivate you that's the job god gave me in the comment section please y'all right there god bless you See y'all tomorrow in the barn at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Friday at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. You can get in there by going to JesusDoers.com. You'll see the barn. God bless. If you have issues, you need to make sure you got the Google Chrome app downloaded. Other than that, just come on in the barn. All right? Have all your work Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday ready for questions and stuff like that. God bless you.